Hey, welcome back to the Engineer Channel. Today, what I want to share with you my 2003 Honda Silverwing. You're looking for a maxi scooter? You need to go check this out. It's where the maxi scooter craze all got started. Come on back and I'll tell you all about it. So welcome back to the channel. I want to show you today my newest acquisition here for a scooter. This is the biggest scooter I've ever had. This is the Honda Silverwing. It's an 03 model. 582 cc liquid cooled uh, four stroke two cylinder. So look at how beautifully sleek this engine package is. 600 cc's. Actually 582 cc parallel twin four stroke engine. With the unsprung engine weight, this bike has a very low center of gravity and handles very, very and, good. And, um, you know, I have a thing for scooters, and I thought, well, let's try the biggest one. I found a smoking hot deal on this uh, Silverwing, and so I want to show it to you. Now, one thing that I've noticed about this bike is this. It's it's a little bit high off the ground. I got long legs, and, and it's a little, I'm on the center stand now, but it's a little high off the ground. And when you pick your feet up, you feel like you ought to be on the peg but my feet hit the side of the bike. You have to really bring your feet up to get them on the floorboards. The floorboards are a little bit higher than I would expect them to be, you know, riding all kinds of different bikes. So that's one thing to think about. And then you do have a front kind of an angle floorboard for your, moving your feet around up here. But it is, for a big guy, for a 6'3 guy, 6'2", 6'3 guy, it's a little bit cramped, I'll have to admit. The steering wheel comes back to you and so you do, it is a nice, comfortable riding position. Your arm is slightly bent. Uh, and this backrest is adjustable. Let me show you how to do that. One of the things that I have noticed about this bike is you sit very close to the steering wheel. I don't have very much room between my knees and the dashboard, and I kind of feel cramped on it. I'm going to attempt to scoot this, this seat bolster back. Let's see if it will adjust. Okay, from what I understand to adjust this, you need to lift the seat, and there's, there's two screws here that you can loosen, slide that back, and then retight them. Let's see if that works. Looks like I need a hex wrench. Okay, when you take those two screws out, you see you can slide this back, and you see that it has holes in it, so if you put this in a different hole, you can adjust that seat back, forwards, and backwards. That's going to be nice. Alright, for mine, I'm going to put it all the way in the back position. i got longer legs. Let's see if that makes a big difference. Okay, so I moved it back. I gained about an inch of clearance. Now I can put my feet on the angled part of the floorboards comfortably. So first off, let's take a look at the dashboard on this guy. Okay, really, really good clean looking dashboard. You've got a, a nice tack over here. Your turn signal indicators above the uh, speedo cluster there. And then you've got a digital uh, gauge over here that tells you the time. You've got your fuel gauge. You've got a temp gauge. And then you also have your, uh, of course, miles down here. And, you, and it, there's a trip odometer as well. This particular one has 8,200 miles on it for being as old as it is, 17 years old, not too bad. The hand controls, very simple. Turn signal, horn, high beam, low beam. And then, of course, on the other side, you've got your run and off, your engine stop, and your start button. And that's it. So pretty clean dashboard, simple, simple controls. You don't want a whole bunch of stuff going on. Nice little kind of, a, this is the factory windshield there. They do make several windshields for these as replacements that are taller. They make a little sport windshield. They make one that's a much taller for a wind deflection. Like other typical scooters, you've got your mirrors mounted on the handlebars. 
Whereas like something like the Goldwing would have the mirrors mounted way up here in the front, which gives you a lot more visibility, but still these work quite nicely. You have two storage compartments. One is lockable, put your key in and turn that. And then you've got a, uh, and this is a deep compartment. You can see here, my hand goes almost to my elbow. Uh, so it's a very deep compartment. And then on the other side, you've got a compartment, which is you just press down and then lift up. And it's a, a much shallower uh, compartment, but a nice little place to store some knickknacks. Between your feet here, you have a little fuel door here that opens up and you have your uh, fuel fill. Then of course, the lion's share of your, of your storage comes under the seat. So you put your key in, turn your key, unlocks this, and you have over 50 liters of storage under here. So a big cavern, this goes way back up underneath the uh, rear fender there. And only in the front, you have place for your tools and for your owner's manual up under the seat. And then uh, plenty, plenty of room for two full helmets or two bags of groceries or, or whatever you need under the seat. One thing about these scooters is they do have really great brakes. Front and rear disc brakes. And some of these came with, the earlier models came with ABS as an option. And after 2010, ABS was standard on these. This is a non-ABS model. But look for that also on these, uh, these bikes. Here's a quick rear view of the scooter. You can see the, uh, the, the uh, lines where this comes from. If you look at the, the rear end of any of the Honda's other scooters, you can see the similarities in those scooters and this one. A lot wider. The rear end of this bike is big. She got, she got a lot of hips on her, you know. But anyway, that's for the big storage compartment that's under here. Also, you can see the little dual exhaust tips over there from the two-cylinder parallel twin engine. And uh, doesn't that look great? You can also see the exhaust on this side has been really dressed up and makes this bike look really slick. Okay, like pretty much all scooters these days as a safety feature, you have a center stand, but you also have a side stand. If I, if I start this bike, okay, and anytime you put your side stand down, it's going to kill the engine. Just a safety feature. Uh, it will run on the center stand. So if you're trying to test something out, put it on the center stand. You can spin the wheels on that. Um, Honda calls this scooter a maxi scooter. It's, it's bigger than your little around town scooter. It's great for tour, two up touring. Uh, and they really call this a, a, a mid-sized touring motorcycle, not a scooter. I don't know if I can get behind that or not. I'm still going to call it a scooter. But you do have a nice place to sit back here. The passenger has some flip-out foot pegs on either side. And a, a nice handhold here that is, that is, it's metal, it's not plastic. In 2003, this scooter only came in one color. You better like it in candy red. It's a beautiful paint job. It's a beautiful color, uh, but this is the only color they got. One of the things that Honda does is that every year they only have a certain color they come out with each year. The last few years of the run of this bike, you could only get it in black. It's all it came in. Uh, this bike was made from 2002 to 2013. Uh, after that, Honda, Honda quit making them. They're talking about bringing the Silverwing back. Uh, the first Silverwings came out in the mid-80s in the GL500, which was a, kind of a baby gold wing. Uh, didn't sell very well and so they discontinued that line. So when they brought the Silverwing name back in 2002, it was a super scooter. The gas mileage on this bike is not, not fantastic. About 40 miles per gallon, that's good, but there's cars that get that good gas mileage. Uh, has a 4.2 gallon tank on it, so it'll still carry you a long way. This is a continuously variable transmission. There's no shifting of the gears. It's completely a twist and go. You get on it, you got front and rear brakes, and you got gas, and that's it. So if you're looking for something simple to ride, this may be your bike. So with the seat adjusted, I think this is going to be much more comfortable for a ride. Let's go for a little quick ride, a little burn on the uh, super scooter, and let's see what it uh, rides like. All right, let's go for a ride.
love scooters, man. Come on. So final thoughts on the Honda Silverwing. It's a big scooter, okay? I don't think it's a motorcycle, and I don't think many of you do either. It's a great scooter. If you want to go on the highway, for I think for ladies that are shorter in stature, this is a great bike to be on. Uh, the Goldwing weighs 900 pounds. For most people, if you're a beginner or you're if you're a lady, you don't have a lot of strength, or, or you're a man that doesn't have a lot of strength for that matter, if that thing starts to tip over, you can't stop it. 900 pounds, it's going to tip over. This bike weighs 511 pounds dry, 550 wet, so uh, that's full of gas, full of oil. 550 pounds, which is still a lot of weight, but the weight is very low slung in the chassis, so it's very easy to hold up. This is the perfect bike for somebody like that. Uh, I, I, somebody that has arthritis that's getting where they can't work a um, a clutch very much and you know want something that's easy to ride this is a great solution it's a great scooter and it and you can go on the highway you can go anywhere you're most scooters you're limited to around town to 45 miles an hour this one will run 105 miles an hour now that's what they claim 105 miles an hour however I happen to know for a fact that once you get up into the higher numbers on your speedometer there's a difference between indicated speed and actual speed. The actual speed of this is probably about five miles an hour off on the top end, so maybe a hundred miles an hour, but it'll still go plenty of fast for any highway in the United States of America, okay? Or anywhere else in the world for that matter. So you wanna get out and do a trip and you wanna go somewhere, this gives you the freedom not just to go around town, but to get out and go wherever you wanna go if you wanna scoot, okay? You can go wherever you wanna go. So great great kind of solution for that is it easy and as nimble as a PCX 150 in town no way uh, is it faster than those bikes absolutely I mean this bike will scoot man it'll go it, it, it's it accelerates very quickly and so uh, it there is a niche market for this right if you're in town and you're just commuting all the time and you never leave town a smaller scooter is probably what you need but if you've got some highway travel in your commute you got some interstate travel in your commute. Smaller scooter just won't do it, man. You're gonna get killed out there on the highway. This thing will do it. So take a look at the Honda Silverwing and see what you think. You gotta test ride it. Remember, it, the seat is adjustable on it, which I didn't know at first. And uh, you know what, if you're interested, this one may be for sale soon, so we'll see. Anyway, thanks for joining us here on the Engineer Channel and I'll see you next time.